Downsizing. I mentioned it at the start. I've seen a few people asking questions here. Now, downsizing is typically what we refer to when people have um, a home in the suburbs, usually a freestanding home. Um, they've had a number of kids. They've all now grown up and moved out of home. Um, Mum and dad are then start, starting to think, well, I've got this big house, three, four bedrooms. There's only two of us. There's all the maintenance, all the cleaning. Do I really need this? Um, you know, do I want to be spending my spare time, you know, maintaining the home, cleaning it, or could I be spending that with my kids and then hopefully in the future, my grandkids? And that's typically what we refer to as a downsizer. But I think it's probably more something that we you know we refer to it more and more about right sizing, or at least people just as they're moving to uh, to the next home should be thinking about some things. So, Jack, I know you and I were chatting about this before, um, and I'm sure everyone would like to hear um, as to what you can sort of um, you know give some some overview about it and perhaps uh, if you've got it, a few tips to people that are thinking about downsizing or right sizing either now or in the future um, as to what they can do to prepare themselves and also what might be the best options for them uh, moving forward with that decision. Uh, yes, James, you're right. Um, doesn't matter as people, they're looking for downsizing and they're looking for the next new home. So they're, they're quite, you know, the, the few things I think they need to consider. So, I'm learning from the Lucas. I'm giving some tips this time. <laughs> All right, good. I like it. Yeah. All right, hit us with tip number one. Okay, so the tip number one is the first. It's very important understanding how much is my home worth. So um, regardless, if you are downsizing or you're looking for your next home and uh, perhaps you don't want to have in the new mortgage or some of them, if they downsize are, they cannot be able to secure a new mortgage because most of them, like you said, they, they almost retired. They all have already retired. So this has become more important to understand how much of your current home works. So, and so where, I, what's the best way to do that quickly and, and easily then? Yes, our suggestion is contact your experienced local agent and to get in the appraisal from your experienced local agent. So this will be the best indication on the price of the property could achieve on the current market. Not only that, by connecting the, your local agent, experienced local agent, when it comes to selling your property, the local agent might give you the best strategy of the selling. And even they will be able to connect it with you about any new property which might suit for you will come into the market. Right. So effectively what you're saying, Jack, is use this to not only get an idea as to what your current home is worth um, so that you know how much you've got to spend on, on your next home, but also work out the best time to sell um, as well as giving that signal to um, to your local agent that you're, you're looking, you're in the market to buy. So as they get any new listings, you can be the first one to uh, to jump on, which I guess that's particularly important right now when we've got you know more buyers than there are sellers um, and prices are skyrocketing if you can get in there first. Yes, that's 100% right. All right, give us tip number two. How oh, the tips number two is what kind, what type of the property should I choose from? So generally- Apartments, speaking, apartments, apartments. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I won't say that. So generally speaking, uh, maybe for the downsizer, they normally looking for three types of the property. The first one who might be the smaller single story home. The second one might be the townhouse. The third one, apartments. What we're saying like the most suitable property would really depends on what is your life stage and what is your propriety. Um, let, me, let me give you an example. If you're moving from the big block of the land of the family home, you enjoy the bit of the garden, and then in your next home, you still want a bit of the garden, maybe you're considering like the, the small townhouse with the small bit of the garden. And uh, also, I'll be realized, because I've been talking with uh, many of the downsizers, I think the mobility becomes a big issue for them. Currently, so if you don't, if if you can't having the stair in your home, I think maybe the modern design and the fully equipped and the fully access 
lifts of the apartment building could be the perfect option for you. All right, so, tip number three. Yeah, tip number three is uh, some people ask me, do I have to buy the smaller home? Uh, actually not. So we, like you said, and uh, we is, have a misunderstanding the downsize. Actually, it's not a means we have to buy the home with, which is smaller. Actually, the lot of the downsize are homeowner, they actually look in the similar size of the property, but there's less maintenance. For example, the land might be smaller, but the property on the land might be not smaller, especially for the newer building home, because they all have the better design. And of course, they have a much less maintenance and it's unlikely to be need to renovate it in the next 10 or 20 years. So this is, we could call the right sizing, not the downsizing. So I think that's a really good um, point, Jack, because we always use the word downsizing, but like you said, right sizing is, is perhaps a better use of the word. Um, and as you said, you know, new stuff, modern design, um, modern technology means that you can live with effectively more in less. Um, you know, we always hear about people saying, oh, my God, I could never live in a place that small. And then they get in and find all the mod cons and the design and the clever storage and, and the way that it's all laid out in the open plan means that they can actually live in a smaller square meterage of an area they thought they could, but actually feel like they're leaving, living in an even bigger space. Yes, yes. That will always suggest that if you'll be able to put some extra money for your next home, maybe that's another great option for you. So this is the third tips. I'm giving you the first tips is, can I rent before I buy? The answer is yes. Actually, if you move into, into the new area, renting is the good way to help you to try the new area, to understanding the location before you buy another new area. And also for those people, maybe they live in, they used to live in like a big block of the family home, now the downsides are to the townhouse or the small apartments. Renting will be the test of the different living style until they really understand, okay, this is my new living style. And now I can work it out what I really need to do. So in that case, we encourage people to renting and before they buy, just to get and understand everything is going to new. It's going to change and are used to that. Good one. All right. Hit us with the last tip. The last tip is should I buy or sell first? Okay. This is the most common question I've been asking for many, many of the downsides or the people they're looking to buy the next home. Let's say if you're selling first, yes, you could have the certain of the budget, which for your next purchase. However, it could be cause a problem, especially with the now the surgery market, which may which will cause maybe the devalue your sale and you, you might lose your money off your selling of your property. So what do we suggest and how you're doing? Prepare your property for quick sale with a realistic expectation on the price. And then now buying first and maybe request the flexible or long settlement period if possible. So that's the best way. Of course, just in case, if you're able to do that, make sure you have a backup plan to be able to hold in the two properties at the same time, and such as maybe you have like ready for your bridging finance or maybe have some extra money just in case. So that's the few tips and a suggestion we give you the people whenever you want to downsize of your property or you're looking to buy your new home. All right. Sound advice, Jack. Thanks for that.